Uh, he apologised apologized at the time and also paid back more than £50,000, saying that he had acted to protect his privacy as he was trying to keep his uh, homosexuality a secret at the time. We'll have more, of course, on that uh, with Sophie at one o'clock. Uh, before that, the weather forecast, and here's Nick Miller. Nick. Hello, it's hard to tell one day's weather from the next this week. We've had a week of showers so far and there are more to come. This is the rainfall picture so far today. Most of the showers early on were to the north and west, but over the past few hours, some have been developing across central and eastern parts of the UK. And by this afternoon, there will be some quite hefty downpours around, but it showers. There are dry and bright spells in between. Newcastle, raindrops on the camera, a shower a short time ago. And look at the strength of the wind. That's another feature of our weather today. It is very breezy. So on through this afternoon, then the focus of the showers are shifting to Scotland and down the eastern side of England. That's where the heaviest ones will be. So a rumble of thunder, even some hail is entirely possible with some of these downpours, but they'll begin to ease away from northwest England, so fewer and further between, if you like. But some of those hefty downpours all the way down to, say, Cambridgeshire into Norfolk. To the south of that, though, across much of southeast England, the showers are very hit and miss. And out of a shower, out of the breeze, in some sunshine, it doesn't feel too bad. It is a brighter day across the southeast. The southwest will see increasing dry and bright weather on through the afternoon, as will Wales and Northern Ireland. So fewer showers around at this stage and into the evening there'll be increasing amounts of sunshine as well to end the day, 15 degrees in Belfast. Now on through tonight, what showers are left will, for the most part, die away and be replaced with starry skies. So if you continue to the west and north of Northern Ireland and then feeding into northwest Scotland. It'll be chilliest overnight, central and eastern areas where the sky is clearer. And it'll be colder than that in the countryside, down to two or four degrees in places. So a touch of ground frost is possible. Now, what does Friday bring? Well, a pretty quiet start, some sunshine around, but the showers get going again, especially to the north and west, may merge to give longer spells of rain in northwest Scotland and later northwest England into parts of Wales. Despite the extra cloud in the sky in the southeast, we'll avoid most of the showers and those temperatures rooted into the mid-teens, feeling cooler under the showers. Now, what about the weekend? Well, the big picture tells a story. Low pressure close by, giving further showers, particularly down the eastern side on Saturday. Then a brief ridge of high pressure coming in on Sunday to kill the showers off for a time before the next frontal system comes into the west with more rain as we go through Sunday. So to put it all together then for Saturday, plenty of showers around Sunday. Increasing cloud in the west, rain later. If you want to know what's going on in government and see the big decisions as they happen. If you want to see what the people you voted for are doing. If you want to cut straight to the things that matter to you. Go to the BBC's Democracy Live website with hundreds of hours of searchable debate and live streams from across the UK and Europe. You can track the decisions that affect your future. Go to bbc.co.uk slash democracy live for a closer look. 46 athletes, 23 countries, and one dream. My dream for me is to get that Olympic gold. That's the greatest thing that anyone can want. Follow their training and find out what drives them. I wake up pretty much every morning and I do look forward to the day. I live in a fantastic place to train and it really is a motivation. I've got so much on my plate all the time with schoolwork and training. At the moment I'm just looking towards the end of my exams. I have a team around me. This is my second family. Only in sport you can have this kind of emotion. The Countdown to London 2012 on BBC News, Radio 5 Live and at bbc.co.uk slash 2012. Through in the bitter British Airways cabin crew dispute. The union representing the crew says it has finally reached an agreement with the airline after 18 months of disputes. As you know, we've been meeting our members today, there's nearly 2,000 of them in there, in order to explain the negotiations and discussions that have been taking place over the last three or four weeks with British Airways management. Uh, I'm delighted to report that those discussions of uh, reached a point where we believe we've achieved an honourable settlement to a very...
Former Chief Secretary to the it's Treasury, not David not Laws, is to be suspended from the Commons for seven days over his expenses claims. A 91-year-old man is found guilty of helping to kill thousands of Jews at a Nazi death camp during the Second World War. Thousands of people in Spain remain outdoors, too frightened to go home after the earthquakes, which killed at least 10 people. And after 21,645 days on the throne, Queen Elizabeth has become the second longest serving monarch in British history. And I'll be here with all the sports news later in the hour on the BBC News Channel as the Scottish Premier League title race is overshadowed by last night's touchline assault on the Celtic manager Neil Lennon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. After 18 months of bitter disputes, British Airways has finally reached an agreement with the union representing its cabin crew, which could bring an end to the strikes. Industrial action, which was due to start next week, has been called off. The agreement will now be put to a ballot of the union's cabin crew members. The strike action has cost British Airways more than £150 million and caused major disruption for thousands of passengers. Let's go straight to our business correspondent, John Moylan, who's at Heathrow. John. Yes, we have an honourable agreement. That was how the leader of the Unite Union tried to sell this new deal to cabin crew staff who've been gathering for this mass meeting in this marquee behind me. And just about half an hour ago, we got confirmation through a show of hands that the deal had been almost unanimously agreed. Now, that signals the end to what has been a very long and bitter dispute. It was a day many BA cabin crew must have feared would never come. As hundreds arrived to hear the details of the proposed deal, some were still reluctant to talk. Surprised to be here this morning? No comment. But for others, there was a clear sense of relief. It's what we all want. We really all want it all to be sorted out now. It's gone on too, too long. Oh, it's great though, yeah. If we